are joined by the one and only Adam of Yeti Valhalla in the building! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sir, do me, a, do me a big favor. Please properly introduce yourself. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment. Plug and promote anything and everything. I am Adam Jang from the band Yeti Valhalla hanging out somewhere in Tokyo. Where exactly in Tokyo? No one actually knows, not even myself. We are on tour. We're going to be starting off our tour on Sunday night, October 22nd at R3, which is a, a big club in Rapungi, Tokyo. Never played there before. Really looking forward to that. Um, we will not be joined by our drummer, for that one show because unfortunately she has influenza right now we are hoping that she gets better really really soon um i heard about that just the other night her name is kaniko she is lovely she is a little japanese idol a furious furious little drummer with the greatest biggest heart and the fastest hands and feet that i have seen on the road thus far we have and andy hewitt a staple in the so socal area for bass <clears throat> stuff and Kohei Togo on the seven string being a monster that he is. Um, we got nine shows on this on this uh, this tour here. It is called Rock and Kill. Our sponsors did not like my original uh, original title, which was Kill Everyone. <laughs> um, so we're now at Rock and Kill. Uh, Mr. Harley right here has been a. a a great help with promotions and stuff. And I thank you very much for putting this together and sticking us together. Love being on this show. First time on the show. This is pretty badass. I saw some of your other streams, saw your reaction video to our song party night in Valhalla, which got released two years ago. Um, and I thank you for, for doing that, bro. So what's up? How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. And it's my pleasure. Uh, I want to start with this. Uh, how, do you recall the first time that you met Harley? Because he's the one that connected this before we dive into stuff about the band. Do you remember the first time you saw him at a show in Japan? And then, and then oh, he's at the next one. Yeah, we, we were hanging out. One. We were hanging out. It, it was like jail, right? And I like I was like, you know, so you want me to stab this guy for, for some cigarettes? And he said, yeah. But seriously, what actually happened, I believe he, he contacted me Um. No, I contacted him because I was going through Instagram and trying to find more people to come to the shows. And so what I did is I went and grabbed, you know, the thing you do is like, Junior, you click on some other person's profile who's who's popular, right? So our, in this situation, I believe, was our drummer. And I started going through American names because they could speak to me. Um, and we'd be <laughs> able to communicate. And Harley was one of those guys. And I bothered him. I was like, hey, dude, how you doing? Want to come to the show? And he came to all of the shows that's which, amazing which was awesome in yeah, japan in the japan like, these are happening in japan in, yeah, yeah, yeah in japan right so the guy's like yeah i'll come down right and then uh and we partied a couple of times um blackout drunk a couple of times i i don't think he Excellent. woke up with a sore butthole <laughs> and neither did i but somebody that's did <laughs> <So. laughs> Uh, how did, before I send it to Harley, who I know has a bunch of fun questions, uh, how did you come up with the band name? Are you a Vikings fan in general? Because I'm actually a Minnesota Vikings fan, and of, of the show, The Vikings, it's all about getting to Valhalla, which is like the Holy Grail land. How did you come up with the band name? Really long way around this, and I'll try to be as concise as possible. In 2012, I was playing this drug club called, called I forgot what it was freaking called, the Compassion Club or something in Vancouver, BC, Canada. That's where I'm from. Um, and I, I made this little band called Yeti, and then I didn't know at the time anything about registering a, a trademark or, or any of that stuff, right? I was like 20, 22 or 23 at the time, so I, I didn't know shit. Um, 
And slowly over the years, so many other companies started calling themselves Yeti, like, you know, like the, the, the fridge company, like the cups and all sorts of things, mm -hmm. a million other bands, other DJs, most of which aren't even musically based companies. And then COVID hit years and years later down the line. Um, and I was I was stuck in Thailand at, at the time and recording some stuff. And I figured, OK, this is a good time to relaunch the thing. So I was thinking, what can you what can you do to keep this decade of work that I did? Right. I just didn't want to change the name. Right. And just completely and, and com just forget about everything that I'd done. I wanted to keep some some lineage there. So I was like, can you, can you add something to that? Is there, or is there like a prefix pissed off Yeti? Does that, does that work? No, fuck no. And I started just going through all these different, <laughs> different possible names. Um, and I happened to have done a couple of shows in, in Sweden and my, my friend over that way, Andy Friedberg, he was, he was always on my ass about Viking lineage. He would tell me old stories about Vikings and stuff. And I happened to love the lore. Okay. I think it's pretty cool. Right? I'm no, I'm no expert whatsoever, and I, I too have watched the show. I, I like like it when he beheads people or pulls the guy's tongue out of his mouth. That was pretty sweet. Um, so I was like Valhalla. That's cool. That makes sense. I I kind of live my life like that. Not not so much in in the sense of extreme violence, but in the sense of we you're a warrior, and if you do a great job and fall in battle. You don't go to heaven. You don't go to hell. You go to Valhalla. I was like, okay, well that that makes total sense. Let's call the band Yeti Valhalla, and it kind of evolved to the point because I had so many members at the time coming in and out because no one could travel with me, and I'd done so and played in so many different countries, and people were just either unable or unwilling to leave their entire life to come hang out with me in places that were like unknown to them and myself even with, with little to no financial security because I offered them nothing but a good time. And I would have to pick up different guys here and there. And it kind of became like an Alice Cooper thing in that Alice Cooper is the band and he has whoever the heck he has with him. Now I'm able to situate myself in Japan, I feel like I'm, this is the place to build stuff and stay here for a while and move with an actual unit of people. So it is an actual band now. But at the time, I was looking at it more as a, an artist thing, calling myself Yeti Valhalla for those two years of COVID. And that is how we have arrived now at the new band name. Hell yeah. Harley, uh, go ahead and shoot a, a question off or two if you have one. Yeah, I guess I'd ask because like, uh, I know when I went for all your shows in Tokyo, you guys were headlining at some of the, you know, biggest live houses, you know, really famous ones. And um, and I was just curious, like how you were able to set all that up and get these tours going, you know. And, um, you know, because I thought that every show was awesome, in my opinion, even the ones that were kind of at the, the little bars and stuff, you know. Those were fun little bars, Sam's Club or what was it, Sam's Bar or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, the Yakuza I, joint, there's a bit of a lag right there. I, I I didn't hear the full question. I'm sorry, bro. Could you repeat that, please? Oh, my bad. Yeah. So I was saying, like, um, you guys were headlining at a lot of, you know, some of the most famous live houses in Tokyo. And, you know, you had a whole tour in, in uh, Japan. And I was just curious, like, how you were able to get all that set up, um, you know, like, yeah, because you had a mixture of, you know, a few shows were at little places, but then some were, like, really, you know, headlining with uh, – uh, on over like a lot of other really good bands and you know famous joints for the the j rock and j metal scene so yeah i was just curious about i don't that. really know how um so so i organize all the tours myself I, I do all the bookings um i i don't have a manager or any of that stuff i would love some of that stuff um but pretty much what happens is i reach out to the venue and i ask them if we can play there and most of the venues in Tokyo actually put the night together and they just give us the headline spot. I, I don't know why. Perhaps it is because I've come here five or six times. I, I don't really I don't really know. And or they just they just assume that we'll be able to to bring them more more people or something. I, I don't really know. But it's more of so it, it, I, I'll let you continue. I'm sorry. But so it's more of like a. 
if if a local band is watching, it's just it's just you just got to hit the horn, man. You got to hit the emails. You got to look everybody up. Call them. The booking is a process in its own, but you've you stepped up and handled that whole that whole portion of of getting out there. It's just it's just contacting everybody. It's essentially, it's just continuously bother people. <laughs> okay, like for for lack of better terms, it's like if if they don't want to hear from you, you gotta still throw throw stuff out and try to find a new venue, find another set of bands to work with. And and just one at a time, essentially cold call people to the point where you can now bring X amount of people through the door. And once you're at that point, I believe that the venue will, will recognize that and and give you a good spot. I think there's a lot of pressure being the headline band. I actually prefer to, to mid-card the night on any given night. I feel that if you're the headliner, you should be bringing in you know, in a in a club that's that's like 200 people over here, right? You should be able to pack out half of that at least by yourself. Um, and I feel that if you don't do that, the 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 night suffers, and all the other bands that are that are with you don't well kind of kind of suffer as well, right? And there there should be like that spot should be given to the people that draw, and we are we are playing with a lot of other bands that do draw. Um, so, so to answer Harley's question, ultimately, I, I don't know, maybe they like us or, or they believe that the band will bring more people than some of the other bands. Harley, I think you had a follow up. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I just think, um, yeah, I think it's pretty solid. Cause I think, uh, most, most bands when they tour in Japan, they're, they're like, they're always backed by these, you know, corporations and everything. And, and you're able to line up all these awesome venues as a, you know, um, grassroots band, which is pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Um, and I, I guess my other, yeah, my other question, I guess, would just be like, why Japan? Why, why Japan instead of another country? I, I played in nine or 10 other countries so far. And this is the one I've, I've had a lot of success in almost every time. It's been hit and miss in a lot of other places. Like our last California run actually went pretty well. We we had a good sizable crowd in most of the places. I, I sold off most of our tickets at the whiskey, um, and and we played in San Jose and other spots there, which which were pretty rad. Um, so I'd say California coast up and down and and Tokyo are are have been our most successful places. I don't know why. It's just how it hits. Uh, the The Japanese market is definitely different than everywhere else that I've played. They they're willing to come out and see an unknown band, and I've heard the same things about like London, right? And and if you're if you hit it, if you hit the promotion hard enough, West Coast is pretty good too. For, for that, for people being interested in supporting the arts. And I'm not saying that other places don't support the arts. It's just that in, in my personal experience thus far, um, the, the return on investment, investment being time in this situation, it's been pretty good. Adam, were you I'd prepped you on the trivia portion of the show? Did you bring any hot Absolutely. sauce with you? I don't have any hot sauce. I could play pretend with you, and and we have to talk about like what kind of hot sauce too. Are we talking like? It like, could be it know. could be a Taco Bell packet. It could be ghost pepper sauce. Anything in between. Yeah, no, that that's stinger stuff. I just did the uh, what do you call that, friend? The, the the Carolina Reaper pepper challenge thing, and and my goodness gracious, <laughs> was that <laughs> actually hot? All right, I was. You know, I, I I eat those Thai chilies raw. You know, I live in Southeast Asia right now, right? So I can just I can just, just mouth those freaking things, and I'm totally fine, right? I got like my my butthole is made of iron, I'm pretty sure. Um, so like, so so like most of these these hot sauces don't do anything. Don't even tickle my freaking nuts. But I did not bring any. I can pr- play pretend with you. Or you can just hit me with the trivia. What what kind pr- of trivia? Pretend is works. The cool thing about the trivia is you get to pick. Is there a movie or TV show that you've seen more times than any other movie or TV show? If I look up trivia on this 
you will not get stumped. It could be anything from Jaws, Harry Potter, South Park, Simpsons, anything. But one or the other, a movie or a TV show. I, I frequently watch South Park, but there's like a mi- how many freaking seasons are there now, right? A lot. I got the <laughs> goldfish, <laughs> right? So I don't know. Just hit me. Sure. Let's okay. Play trivia. I, I got to look up some South Park trivia. Give me a second, Harley. Shoot off one more. How can we get some Yeti Valhalla merch? It's coming really soon. I promise. We got uh, a, a new logo. It's uh, also made made in uh, California. But it's going to be coming out really really soon here. I have a packet of stickers that one of our one of our fans just dropped off just just last night. I'm just looking. I don't know where the heck they are. But they're uh, they're around here somewhere in my my little shoebox apartment. Um, but they will be available online after this tour. Um, the the album release party is on January 13 at Live Freak in Shinjuku. The it's, the next Tokyo run is not going to be a, a tour. It's going to be that one show, and we're going to pack it out, do the big release, show the 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 big members reveal right. Have the big posters of this boom 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 right across and we're going to solidify this as a hard unit that is going to be traveling with me and we're going to be revealing the next step of the uh, of the the band which is going to be playing in America and and Japan those are going to be our two big markets Excellent. Excellent. hell yeah Let's see how many times you have seen South Park, though, because this is your South Park trivia. Now, I'm going to start off with an easy one. I'm going to start off with an easy one, and then I'm going to judge based on how quickly you get this answer, and we're going to we're gonna turn it up. Do it. Cartman once formed a Christian rock band. Can you tell me the name of that band? Faith Club One. Okay, so we're going to have to step it up. Yeah, hell yeah. That was the easy one. It's going to get hard after this. Uh, beyond the January reveal of the solidifying members, everything that you just mentioned, can you can you break down any other plans you have in 2024 that you're allowed to tell us about? I know sometimes some of this stuff can't be revealed. But what are you allowed to tell us that we can look forward to in 2024? Well, the album release party, that, that's going to be sick, right? Our, our new stuff. Um, we're we're going to be playing in America. We're going to be trying to... To release our our album um, through through what's that freaking place called? Uh, Tow- we're gonna be selling it through Tower Records in Japan, and we're looking for another one that we're that we're going to be trying to sell it through um, physically in America. If we can't, then we're gonna be putting it all online. Um, other things, um, pretty much everything is still. There, I'm not trying to hide anything. Um, it just, it just depends on how far along the deal is. So I can't really, really fucking say a lot of things here, uh, but, but we're working with, we're working with, um, some of my, my good friends that I've known for a long time, like, uh, like John Finberg, he, he worked with Nightwish and Overkill and some other people. Um, so we're going to be putting some things together with him in, in the States. Uh, I'm looking at East coast and some shows. Um, in in LA and some other spots in Cali uh, that that will be hitting. Uh, yeah, let me know. Mostly... I'm sure. I'm sure. Me and Harley would definitely come out to the to those West Coast dates for sure. Well, I know he will, but I'll, I'll, I'm gonna. Tra- I'm sure he's gonna. He'll drag me out, and I'll be like, yeah. And we'll buy some yeah, of that new merch that. too. Yeah. Heck yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, this one is a little bit tougher. We only usually do two, but this one is substantially harder trivia. <laughs> In season four, there's an episode oh, called shit. called Trapper Keeper. It's a very popular episode. Do you remember the Trapper yeah. Keeper episode? Vaguely, but yeah. The cyborg uses an alias of a comedian. What is the comedian's name? Oh damn, man! <laughs> yeah. Tra- oh, trap, trap. I- I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go. I. This is not correct, but we have to have an answer. I'm gonna throw Bob Saget out there. 
You're kind of close. You're kind of close. Who was, who was it? Who was it? I'm... Bill Cosby is the answer ah. that we're looking for. Ah. Bill, Bill Cosby. Is a comedian anymore? All right, but anyway. Yeah, one's in jail, one's deceased, unfortunately. But it, yeah, it, it is that way. Do you have any? Do you have any interesting vocal warm up tricks that you do before a show? Anything that you that you do just to to marinate the throat cords? Do we do we lose well, you? It, it, yeah, oh. yeah, it's just cut off. I heard but vocal warm up techniques. So I got like the the usual one that I do at the club. If people speak English, is is a, just a, a series of yas. <laughs> right so like you know start up higher it's only 10 a.m here so i can't really do it do it full, full on right but you're gonna be like yeah, yeah right like that that kind of thing uh, up and down and and if if there people don't speak english at the club where i'm playing at then it's it's that but kiss my ass <laughs> suck my dick <laughs> yeah, for sure and play with my balls, yeah! And that—that's typically what what I will do. Yeah, that was badass. Hell yeah! Thank you, uh, Harley. We've got enough time for like one or two more questions each. If you wanna, you wanna set it off, and then I'll do some fun ones. Yeah. How how do you pick your outfits for your shows? It's been an evolution of me going to either thrift stores. Or, or having something made for me in a third world country, which is equivocal of the price at a at a thrift store. So, so you, I got like these suits and all these like fancy things and stuff that I had made for me for like ten bucks in in rural Vietnam or Thailand. Yeah, it's cool. So you just will will be out and about, and then have you'll pay someone to make tonight's outfit for the show. Or like, just I need a long jacket because Billy Gibbons has a long jacket, and and I want that. Or I'm like, can you can you give me that jacket that Prince has in this video, but make this less gay? Can you like just tone it down a little <laughs> bit, and then give that to me, and and that's what I want, right? And then that, or or like, like you know, like '90s wrestlers be like, you know, I think that the Ultimate Warriors or or Shawn Michaels. Fucking chaps, le leather chaps are pretty badass. But can we take the tassels and all the, all the shiny rhinestone stuff off, and then just give me that? So, so memories of my childhood or thrift store, and have it made, and then I will use that for years upon years until it just falls apart and I get more of them. Like kind of like how we men view underwear or socks. That's cool. I can dig it. Uh, are you a cannabis user? And if so, indica, sativa, or hybrid? It depends on the country that I am in right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> because, because of Japan, right? Um, whenever I am I'm in a place where, where it is okay, absolutely, yes. The strongest thing you got, I don't care what it is. What, what, kind, of, uh, what kind of plant? Indica, sativa, hybrid, I, I don't care. What, whatever will put me down with the smallest amount is what I want in, in the largest quantity possible for X amount of dollars that I have in my pocket without having to go to the ATM. I like that. I like that. My final question, then I'm going to send it back to Harley, is uh, tell me the worst show Yeti Valhalla's ever played. Everyone has a terrible show. Everything goes wrong at this show. And then simultaneously, okay. part two, your ultimate favorite munchy meal. Okay. So we played this one place. I'm not going to say where it was. Um, the drummer did not know how to play drums. I'm just going to say that, right? So he, he's, he called himself a pro. He's from... A certain part of the world and and it wasn't actually that long ago it was actually three tours ago so that way and anyone who follows along could, could figure it out um and the guy said he knew all the parts the guy took a year to learn to learn learn the songs um and then he showed up and couldn't actually play the song so we had to get rid of him the next day Dang. and that was that was the worst 
Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna, just going to call that the worst show, not because of the club. The club did a great job. The sound man did a great job. There were people there. No one got mad and threw beers because they were incredibly polite. They did not need to be. Um, and I just, I personally thought that was the worst show ever because we failed to entertain the, the audience and we failed to live up to the hype that I was pushing. Right. So, um, and in terms of, so what do you, what do, wait, 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 what do you do in that situation? Cause you said it was uh, three tours ago after the first night you're fired. What do you do in that 24 to 48 hour crunch time to get another drummer? Did you guys just play the next night with tracks? No drummer. I always have a backup guy just in case. Cool. There's a, there's a contingency plan for everything. Just in case you got to be Batman in this industry. And be like, okay, well, if this if this happens, we pay this much, and this guy comes in who's ready. And it's you know, and it's it's not something that this guy this the pro is going to really want to do. He's doing it for money. He's not doing it for joy. There's always a couple of different kinds of pros that you find a, a, along the path. Right? It's like some of them are are into it, but they're like. My, my time and my skill is worth something, and this is how much it is. And me being a struggling musician can't always afford that. So I say, okay, in an emergency, yeah, I'd be, I'd be willing to, to, to pay that amount. Are you willing to just step in if I give you 24 hours notice? He's like, okay, I'll, I'll learn your songs if that does happen. And that unfortunately has happened two or three times in... 10 years that I've been doing this as Yeti. And then there's other guys too, who are like, you know, I love to do this. I love to do it for the music and stuff. And, and I'm willing to, to just build this with you. And those are the kind of guys that I want to tour with. And those are the kind of guys that I would give the spot to re whether or not they are established musicians in that if they work with me, can they bring people to the club? I would prefer to work with someone who wants to be in the band and build this with me um who doesn't have a, a giant following um not a tangible giant following not just bot followers on instagram or something like that right I um, yeah yeah and I, i'd rather work, work with that that person um and and try to bring people in that's yeah. smart of you to have a, like you said, the contingency plan just in case. And just so, because the yeah. show must go on. So there was always a plan B just in case. Harley, send us out with, with the final question for Adam. All right. Final question. How do you feel about, you know, stage stunts and stuff like pyrotechnics and, you know, spinning the, the drummers around, things like that? Like, you, do you ever integrate those into your shows or do you have plans to do that in the future? I would love to, as long as we stay away from the Michael Jackson, Pepsi, my hair goes on fire thing, all right? Like as, as long as we get away from that, costs a lot of dough, I would imagine. But, you know, if we ever get to that point or find a sponsorship for fireworks or, or whatever, all right, then, then fantastic. Let's do it safely. Um, I think that would be rad. I, I'm on uh, for the live freak show. I've, I've hired three dancers, so like we're getting closer to that. Oh, I'll yeah. be there for that. Sparkles, maybe sure. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, yeah, heck yeah, it could come on out. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> that is cool. Well, Adam, we appreciate your time, man. I, I, I'm sorry we couldn't do a little bit longer, but uh, Yeti Valhalla is badass. I, I've enjoyed the couple jams I've, I've heard. You have just an a glow about you regarding your stage presence and your and your voice. And uh, if, it's okay, if it's okay with you, can I throw this on YouTube tomorrow morning? And tag you in a bunch of stuff. Absolutely, I will share it around. I'll do do my, my best with with all that stuff. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time and having me on your show. And thanks, Harley, for putting this together again. And uh, let us know when those West West Coast dates are, are there so we can come out, buy some merch, support, and, and catch a show and bring a bunch of friends with us. You're the man. I hope we can do this again with the full band and, and, and a, tran a translator or something. That'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Hell yeah. Got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam of Yeti Give me a hell yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day, sir. Thank you.
Alright, what's up, Welcome to the local Bay Smokeout.